Good morning, second grade. Welcome to language class again. Today we have some more about your book report. So hopefully you had time to read all of your book and we'll talk about that some more. Let's first of all do some review here. Let's talk a little bit about compound sentences again. So compound sentences are two sentences joined together with one small word in the middle. And let's look here on the board. We have some examples. Jane and Margaret went shopping. So Jane and Margaret went shopping. Uh, here's your word and. But this word, this is the only word before and, Jane. Is Jane a sentence by itself? No, Jane is not a sentence. So we would not call this a compound sentence because a compound sentence needs to have two complete sentences joined together. Let's look at this one now. Jane went shopping and Margaret went with her. Does that sound a little bit more like a compound sentence? I think it does because here's your little word and, and before that we have Jane went shopping. So Jane went shopping is a complete sentence and also the sentence after and is also complete. So we would say that is a compound sentence. Let's talk a little bit about singular and plural and possessive nouns. Do you still remember what singular nouns are? Singular nouns are like things that are just one thing, like cookie, and then plural nouns are things that are more than one, like puppies, and nouns. Remember, nouns always name person, place, or thing. So if you're thinking of nouns, think person, place, or thing. And then a possessive noun is something like Taylor's like apostrophe s at the end of the name because if we would be thinking of something Taylor possesses which possesses means that you own something so we could say Taylor's puppy and so we would say this would be a possessive noun. Okay let's think about now um, your lesson for today going into writing a book report you may open your light units to page 22 if you're not there already. Um, open up your light units and I'm going to read to you the teaching box that's on there. So yeah, let's start reading that now. Okay, everyone ready? It says, writing a book report. Now that you have finished reading your library book, you are ready to write your book report. In your book report, do not tell everything about the book. Just tell two or three interesting things that happened. If your book had an interesting, exciting ending, do not tell about it. Your book report should make people want to read the book. So the aim for a book report is trying to get people to want to read the book that we are talking about. So we want to try and make it sound really interesting and we don't say all the details at the end because we want them to want to read that book too. Okay, let's keep reading there in that box. It says now, Dick read a book about kangaroos. This is the first paragraph of his book report. This is a true story about kangaroos. It tells where kangaroos live and what they eat. It tells how they protect themselves from their enemies. So that's what Dick, um, that was the first paragraph of his book report. And you can kind of see how he, well, he's talking about kangaroos and he tells what the book tells about. Like he, he says, it tells where kangaroos live and what they eat. It tells how they protect themselves from their enemies. So yeah, that's kind of an example of what you will be writing, how you will be writing your book report. So let's go to part A now in creative writing. So you should have your entire book read by now. By now you should have the entire book read. And was thinking about your book now, was it a happy or a sad book? You should think about why it made you feel that way. Think about interesting happenings from your book. Things that you liked or disliked and why, why you liked or disliked these things about the, about the book. 
or about the happenings. Let's take a look at part A now on page 22. So you can go there to, with me on creative writing, part A, um, page 22. Number one, part A says, follow these directions. Number one says, turn to page 65, tear out your book report form. Now, in the back of your light unit somewhere, you should have a, a um, book report form. So you can go to that and you can tear it out. And then number two says, write your book report by filling in the blanks of the book report form. You may look back at the sentences you wrote in creative writing in lessons one through six. So now you're going to be filling out that form and you can look back at the sentences that you wrote in creative writing in lessons one through six. You were writing about, um, well, like yesterday you wrote about your favorite part of the book, so you can, well, let's turn back to lesson one first. Lesson one will be the first lesson that you started writing about it. And lesson one, you have the title and the author, so you can write that down for starters because usually we start with the title and also the person that wrote the book, right? You know, before we go too much further, we, we need to kind of write the first things um, about the book, which would be the title and who wrote the book. And in lesson two, you would have had write who or what your book is about. So in lesson two, you can go back and you can copy that sentence on your book report form who or what your book was about. In lesson three, you had written where the story happened. So now you can write a good sentence to tell where the story happened. And um, in lesson four, you wrote about something that happened in your book. So you can, if you wrote a good sentence back in lesson four for something that happened in your book, then you can just go ahead and copy the good sentence on your book report form. And then in lesson, well, lesson five was a quiz, so you didn't have anything on there, but lesson six, which would have been yesterday, you had write your favorite part of the book. So the favorite part of your book, then you can write that on your book report form too. So yeah, start back with lesson one. And as you're writing, try to remember to write, think in complete sentences as you're writing, um, because then that will, be more proper and interesting for you to tell and easier for you to tell other people too. Okay, um, let's go now to penmanship. Today you have the letters M, N, and K in penmanship, and you've learned all these letters, so it's just a review. So M is made like this. A loop on top of the line and slant down and go right back up on that line. Hit the top line, go down like that, go straight up on your other line, and like this. Okay, and then the N is made in kind of the same way. You would start at the top line up here and with your loop. And remember to slant as you're going. And you hit that line there. And instead of two mountains, you only have one. And then we have a K. The K is also a loop on top like this. Slant down. And then you come over here and kind of make a little slanter thing and a loop and go like So you have, a, you have a sentence today to write again. Um, the sentence today is Nevin helps poor children in Mexico. So in Mexico and Kenya. Nevin helps poor children in Mexico and Kenya. And so remember to have good posture as you're writing. Don't forget to put your to dot your eyes. You have quite a few eyes today, so don't forget to dot your eyes. And yeah, try to do a really neat job on that. Okay, let's go to spelling section now. So spelling words, um, you can 
read them with me here. I just have a list here. Hopefully you can see them. It says, they, eighth, peace, head, way, ceiling, police, great, key, field, obey, monkey, nay, pray, and I. We're thinking today about um, the E sound. So you can go to your spelling section on page 25. I'm going to read that teaching box to you. It says, the E sound can be spelled with E-I or I-E. This rule will help you to remember which spelling to use. So they say use I before E except after C or when sounded like A as in neighbor and way. That's a good um, little saying to go by, a little rhyme. And then they have words there, examples like believe. You use I before E in believe. In ceiling, it has a soft, it has a C there, so then you will use E before I in ceiling. Eighth is, eighth is spelled with, um, or when sounded like A, then you will not use I before E because eighth is sounded like A. So here's that little saying, you can read it with me. It says, use I before E except after C, or when sounded like A, as in neighbor and way. So yeah, that's a good rhyme to remember. Um, it helps you to know when to use I before E to make the, to spell the E sound. Um, okay, so I think we got everything pretty much covered today, second grade. Um, yeah, I'll let you go ahead in your book report and you can think through that. It would probably be good again to go in a quiet place because when you're writing things like that, it's good to have a quiet place to go into. So, okay, have fun with your book report and yeah, I'll talk to you later.